Welcome back everyone. It has been way too long. I have something super exciting to show you here today, but first before we get into this bad boy and the reason why I've been gone so long, let's take a quick moment to take a look over here at PPI to pass. This right here is the one and only deal that I have to bring you guys. This 15% savings at PPI to pass or Kaplan, um, this is the place where you go when you want to pass your PE exam, your FE exam, your SE exam, and this uh, this reference manual, actually, the PE civil reference manual right here, uh, has a place of honor on my desk because if I don't know how to do something or I don't remember how to do something, odds are it's in that book. We're talking torsion of shafts. We're talking slope stability. We're talking anything, construction management, uh, transportation, environmental, structural, typical civil, it's all in this book. And that book right there, yes, it is $300, but I highly, highly recommend that one. Uh, before I even took my exam, I was using some old reference books off of people who had taken the exam before me at my company. It is probably three or four inches thick, and it is hefty but it has so much knowledge in it i personally wish that i had the ability to go out and get all of these manuals mechanical especially because mechanical would have helped me a lot in what i've been working on where i've been these last several months if you are studying up for any of the exams they've got you covered i personally worked all the way through their fe civil book when i was studying up for that in undergrad I got a couple practice tests for the PE civil structural exam when I took that because I knew that my week, my best way to study would be to find my weaknesses, study up those areas, and get right back to what I needed to be doing with everything else. So highly, highly, highly recommend. They've got classes and things too, but whatever you're getting, take the 15% off. I get a little kickback on that too. It helps incentivize me making these videos, but it's at no additional cost to you. You're saving 15%, but for full transparency, yes, I do get a little bit of a kickback on this. However, even if I didn't, I, I had no affiliation when I bought my books, when I was studying for the exam, and if at some point I get to a point in my career where I actually do get some sort of benefit out of taking the SE exam, you better believe I'm taking one of these review classes because I work in aluminum window industry. I don't use my steel. I don't use my concrete as much as I used to anymore. And I certainly am not seeing much with wood or light gauge unless I'm anchoring to it. So this is where I'll be. Now, enough of that. This right here is where I've been. This has been my torment and my triumph. I am so ready to put this thing together and start testing. This is supposed to be, and I say supposed to because we're really, really trying to get down here on price. This is supposed to be a semi-usable, semi-reliable tensile tester, sub $500. Now, that it sub $500 for me. It's not going to be sub $500 for everyone. There's a great steel yard up by my work that I go to all the time. They'll sell me this tube, scrap, whatever size I want. If I can go find it in the yard for like 40 cents a pound, no problem to get this figured out, cut, knocked together. I happen to have the tooling and the connections to make that happen. That's not going to be the case for everyone. But this is based on the freeloader open source tensile tester, which their target was to be under $5,000. And they did it. Uh, they weren't under by very much, but they uh, also just procured everything straight through McMaster Car. And to... <laughs> There's a, a hardware store in the town I grew up in where they've got everything. They've always got it. It might have been on the shelf for 30 years, but they've got it but you're going to pay five times as much as anywhere else. So you start somewhere else, and then you go there. That's the same way I feel about McMaster Car. If you can find it somewhere else, do it. But if you can't, McMaster's got your back. They definitely have it. For example, these 120 tooth gears right here 
on McMaster car, $230 each. That was my big stumbling block in this whole build, was figuring out how to get these gears in a cheaper way. And I went around and around and around. I drew them up. I literally 3D printed some and tried to sand cast them in my driveway with an old blacksmith forge that I've got. And uh, turns out, if you just take a 3D print and you try to sand cast it and you pull it back out of the sand, you're bringing a lot of sand with you because of the, the unevenness of the layers and you're going to get horrible, horrible detail and it doesn't work at all. You might be able to sand it. You might be able to lacquer it or something. I didn't try that. I just kept looking for another way to do it. Um, I did numbers on what it would take to do these out of 3D printed plastic and it seems like on paper technically maybe it would work but I have concerns about the lack of rigidity that that would introduce. So what I finally ended up doing is I went to send, cut, send, and I uploaded DXF files of these three gears. Um, and I actually ended up putting a hexagon into these so that I could throw a, an Acme nut just right in the middle of it and go from there. But uploaded these DXFs and told them to go ahead and water jet these for me out of some plate. In this case, I've gone with uh, 3 8 6061 T6 aluminum, plenty strong, way stiffer than anything I was going to come up with off the 3D printer. I'm really excited for these to get here. They're supposed to be here in like two or three days. One of these big gears was supposed to be $230 off of McMaster car. $37 shipped to my door for all three of these. Now, I haven't seen them yet. I don't know. I know there gets to be some angularity involved with water jet. And I'm kind of hoping, maybe naively, kind of hoping that maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to take the top side of the cut and have that be up for this gear and this gear, and the bottom side of the cut up for the middle gear, and then it might kind of balance out. We'll see. We'll see if it's even a problem. Um, if it proves to be a problem, then my next step is going to one of these mail order wire uh, EDM milling places because that will definitely be dimensionally just fine to make this work but this though it is a tensile tester and a fairly precision instrument doesn't need to be nearly as precise as say a really fine cnc machine or something because there's no load reversals on this i'm not planning to do any sort of fatigue loading testing or load reversal testing any of that maybe we get there someday but for a start this is meant to just pull maybe maybe i'll make the crosshead engineered to also be a push they'll probably be kind of a pain i'm expecting i'd probably have to unthread it all the way flip it over and put it back in to make the stresses work out but current plan pull only and with that if there's some slop it, it's not going to matter as much. As we start the pull, there's going to be a little slop. There's going to be a little bit of rattle around in the start of the graph, but we're going to scrap that data and throw it away and just go from there. And by the time all the slack gets taken up, as long as I can make sure that the crosshead, which isn't pictured here, I'm sorry, guys, um, we're going to try to make sure that that crosshead is nice and level in here so that it's getting pulled evenly from both sides. But it's going to pull, and that's going to be fine. Backlash, not a problem because we're not having load direction reversal. So for anyone who's not aware, and that was me before I started on this journey here, this is a big NEMA 34 stepper motor. And I say big, it is... If things are right, yep, 3.4 inches across the faceplate here. And that is where that 34 in NEMA 34 comes from. 3.4 inches across the faceplate. Now, the stepper motors in a 3D printer or a light laser cutter tend to be NEMA 17s, 1.7, half as wide as this thing. And the the NEMA classification really just has to do with that base plate. So you can have a NEMA 34 motor here that is this dimension, which is 
5 inches, so it's 5 inches long, or you could have a NEMA 34 motor that's 2 inches long, and it would still be a NEMA 34 motor as long as that face form factor is the same. But typically what limits your torque in these motors is the diameter of the total windings, so a NEMA 34 is generally much stronger than a NEMA 17. Uh, NEMA 23 is another common size, and that's what people usually use for light duty, like wood CNC projects. That's another thing on my bucket list is building a wood CNC, but we aren't there yet. Anyway, this big motor can put out about 1,200 ounce ins ounce blah 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 ounce inches of torque, and I need to find a better way to mount this. I think what's going to end up happening is this cross piece on the top is going to be bigger. I'll notch out a window for the body of this to sit in and have a hole that the shaft pokes through and move all of this gear work up. But regardless, motor's going to be firmly mounted. Motor's going to turn with 1,200 ounce inches of torque or 75 pound inches. Then this 24 tooth gear is going to engage and mesh with these two 120 tooth gears, five to one gear ratio. So we're going to gain a lot of, a lot of uh, torque on these guys, but we're gonna have to move a lot to twist them. And that's actually really good in this case because we wanna be moving slow. We're trying to do quasi-static loading. So this stepper motor, every time it gets a pulse from the stepper driver, which gets a pulse from a, in this case, I'm going to use a little Arduino. Um, Arduino sends pulse to stepper motor driver. Stepper motor driver is going to make this turn one two hundredth of a revolution. That's 1.8 degrees. And that one two hundredth of a revolution on this shaft is going to be divided by five to get over here. So that's going to be one one thousandth of a revolution every time this pulses. Then the pitch of this lead screw, which if you're paying attention, I, sh I should collapse this. Uh, right now this is shown as a half inch 10 Acme thread. Uh, Acme threads are not like normal threaded rods at the hardware store. These are closer to a square thread here. They've got a lot more strength and they look a lot like a vice lead screw that you would see and that's exactly what we're doing we're, we're pulling we're clamping we're doing that same sort of thing so we need this strength but uh, what we're going to have is a thread I'm going with a 5 eighths inch diameter lead screw with an 8 thread per inch pitch I believe is the I'm, I get confused whether it's pitch or lead so don't quote me on that but one revolution will take you one eighth of an inch. So one one thousandth of a revolution will take you one eight thousandth of an inch. So that is going to mean every time we send a pulse to this, these are going to turn and the crosshead, which I apologize for not having drawn yet, is going to advance one eight thousandth of an inch. That's point zero 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 one two five inches, an eighth of a thou. That's going to pop up just a little bit, and then go just a little bit more. And every time we advance it, that one eight thousandth of an inch, this load cell down here, which is going to have a clamp on it holding on to the bottom end of our test specimen, is going to take a reading. This is an S-beam load cell. I have a cheap one from China. We'll see how it works. But uh, there's going to be, this is threaded, there'll be an eye bolt sticking out of the top of this, wires come out of here, there's a full Wheatstone bridge inside of here to resolve the stresses and come up with the actual load that this is experiencing through the axis of these two threaded holes. So we're going to send a pulse, we're going to take a force measurement, we'll send another pulse, we'll take another force measurement, over and over and over and over. And what we're then going to get out of this is a force displacement plot. That force displacement plot 
once we divide by dimensions from the specimen, we can turn into our stress strain plot. And from there, we can work out mechanical properties like the yield stress. We can work out the ultimate strength of small weak components. This thing, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, is designed for about 5,000 pounds of pulling power with a pretty nice safety factor worked in. So this should be pretty safe. Of course, we're going to throw e-stops on this and everything to make it as safe as possible. Might even throw some acrylic around it to house it and keep everyone's hands out of it. Throw a, a switch on there that won't let it run until the, <coughs> until the door's closed or what have you. But um, we're going to pull on parts. And ideally... We're going to break a bunch of 3D printed parts. We're going to demonstrate a bunch of concepts in here of what happens when you tweak this variable. What what are the differences in buckling loads on a column if we start getting into compressive loading on this thing? What are the differences in compressive loads on the column if we brace it or if we don't? Things like that. Just making some good demos for you guys to see. And I'm curious about a lot of materials that people don't have published values for. Um, one thing that we do a lot of in my industry is we've got these nylon, these glass reinforced nylon thermal breaks in between the inside and outside aluminum pieces of the window frames that go on skyscrapers to improve the energy efficiency. But there's not that great of data around it. There's kind of rules of thumb that we live by, but I want better data. I want to be able to know what that does when I'm really pushing things to the limit. And I need that data to be able to push further to the limit. I got to know what the limit is to push close to it, right? So that is where we're headed. And in a perfect world, I would absolutely love if anyone has the hookup on uh, CNC, laser cutter, any of that sort of stuff, either use of one or I would love to build one or get my hands on one. I just can't afford it right now with the wife in law school and it's... A, a while yet so um, if you happen to have a hookup let me know otherwise if you guys have ideas of how to do this better how I should reconfigure this because like I said th these are the bolt mounting holes down here this has got to move this can't be here I think I'm probably just going to go for some heavier tube and pull this all up I don't know that I'm going to get these big fancy bearings these <laughs> might be uh, some jam nuts going into a, a bronze sleeve or something. We'll we'll see where we land, okay? But this is the goal. And I'm really, really looking for any input. I'm really excited to get this thing off the screen into my workshop and start breaking stuff and getting good data from it. And I'm also really looking forward to sharing that with you guys. So as always like comment subscribe let me know your thoughts let me know what you guys want to see happen to this let me know what kind of videos you want to see made i'm happy to make you guys animations i'm happy to show you how to use software or talk through tricky things on homework problems if you've got a homework problem you're stuck on send it to me i'll make a video about it so share the word and i'm really looking forward to where this project is going to lead us Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night.